Thank you very much, Ben. I appreciate that. Are you able to hear me okay way back there in the back? All right. Okay, good. Good deal. Um, so uh, I am uh, happy to be uh, able to talk a little bit about Canada. Uh, and I want to say that um, uh, as an audience, uh, I'm glad that you're interested in uh, finding out a little bit about something besides America. Uh, and uh, understanding uh, a little bit about our neighbors to the north. Um, I also want to say that having spent some time in Uncle Sam's Army, I don't really consider myself a baby boomer. I, I consider myself sort of an old, old crotchety guy who asks for discounts at stores nowadays. Uh, however, uh, happy to have you here. This first uh, slide is uh, actually uh, of the um, Prime Minister of Canada, is Justin Trudeau. He's waving to you in front of the Canadian Rockies. Uh, and Justin Trudeau is the second youngest Prime Minister of Canada, uh, born on Christmas Day, 1971. 1971 is kind of an important year for me because that's when I was married to my wife. Uh, so uh, anyway, he's 46 years old, uh, a very vibrant and charismatic. Come on in, have a seat, Hal, good to see you. Um, so, uh, Anyway, uh, he is waving to you and welcoming you to his uh, fair country. So uh, Canada is uh, composed of three territories on the northern part, as well as ten provinces. Uh, I'm not sure you can see this um, laser light here or not, but if you start off with the western uh, territory, that's the Yukon territories in this kind of a, a purple. Next to it is the Northwest Territories. Uh, this also used to be the Northwest Territories, but in 1999, it split up and became the Nunavut Territories, and it extends up into the uh, Arctic Circle. The 10 provinces starting on the west side are British Columbia. Uh, then there is the province of Alberta. This uh, sort of symmetrical uh, section here is Saskatchewan. Uh, and then next door is Manitoba. What looks like an Italian province, sort of a boot here, is Ontario. <coughs> this green province is uh, one of the larger provinces of uh, Canada, is uh, Quebec, or as the French Canadians like to say, Quebec. Uh, and over here, in a sort of lighter purple, is Labrador and uh, Newfoundland. Uh, some folks like to say Newfoundland, but it's really pronounced Newfoundland. Down here is a maritime province, Nova Scotia, and sort of sandwiched in this yellow is New Brunswick with a tiny, tiny little province here called Prince Edward Island, or PEI. So those are the 10 provinces of, uh, of Canada. So this is a satellite view of Canada. Uh, you're about 150 miles above the Earth's surface, and you're looking uh, at the uh, the country, and uh, one thing that strikes you is it's big. In fact, it's the second largest land mass in the world. The largest is uh, Russia. Canada expands uh, six time zones. And so here is my attempt to show the sort of the international border of uh, Canada, which is the longest shared border in the world. Um, and this white highway down here is the scene of the book that I took the picture from. <laughs> it's a world book uh, encyclopedia. Anyway, it goes from Greenland and works its way down and then hooks around the sort of northern part of Maine and works its way through the Great Lakes and on up here to uh, Alaska. Now that's 5,525 miles long, so it's quite a, quite a large country in that regard. So Canada actually is a, a, a Huron Iroquois uh, name that uh, means village or settlement. Uh, initially uh, spelled uh, can ta but then later, uh, I guess, anglicized to Canada. Uh, I want to give credit to some of the slides that I use in this uh, presentation. They're actually taken from a book called Canada 150 Panoramas by George Fisher, and that's a, that's a nice book uh, if you have a chance to uh, pick it up at the library, hopefully the Athens-Clark County Library, 
uh, it, uh, it shows some beautiful scenery of Canada. So Canada is a country of diverse landscapes. <laughs> And the top is uh, of the Nunavut territories, a rugged area. And the next slide below is uh, actually of British Columbia. On the eastern edge of British Columbia, sort of shared with the uh, province of Alberta, are the Canadian Rockies. And then there is the what I like to call the Kansas of Canada. It's a flat land of Saskatchewan, but also the bread uh, basket of Canada, lots of wheat grown there. And then there's a lush forest area with uh, much um, scenery in terms of running waters and rivers in Quebec. And finally, the maritime provinces uh, pose another kind of uh, a scenery, if you will, a maritime uh, rugged coastal uh, province. Uh, it's interesting, if you go to the maritime provinces, you'll see a lot of shipwreck wrecks because it's such a rugged shoreline. The um, national symbol for Canada is the maple leaf. Um, and what most people do not realize is it actually was a badge of the Royal Canadian Regiment. Uh, started back in 1860. Um, they wore the maple leaf on their, on their shoulders. Um, and the Royal Canadian Regiment uh, later became, guess what? the Royal Canadian Mounted Police, or the RCMP, nicknamed the, the Mounties, um, in part because they travel uh, by horse in a lot of the rugged territories of uh, the Mounties. Uh, I had heard the Mountie has to be at least six feet high, uh, and I have had the chance to stand next to a couple of Mounties, and they are kind of imposing uh, people. They are actually uh, the federal branch of law enforcement in Canada, a little bit like the FBI uh, are in, uh, in America. Mm -hmm. Mount Logan is the highest uh, peak in Canada. Its elevation is 19,551 feet. For those who like metric, that's a, about 10,000 meters uh, tall. Uh, an impressive structure. And it's in the, uh, the most western province of Canada, the Yukon mm -hmm. Territories. This, I think, is a kind of a pretty scene here. It's the Yukon River by White Horse uh, in the Yukon Territories. White Horse is the capital, if you will, of the Yukon Territories. And uh, if you uh, ask the question, where does the Yukon come from, it turns out it's a, a, a native North American uh, Indian name for Long River. <laughs> it's, but a pretty, pretty scene there. Uh, just a sort of a little bit of a detour here. Uh, my wife and I were on an excursion uh, slash cruise and we were steaming up from Vancouver to Skagway and we jumped across the border to the Yukon Territories and caught a narrow gauge railroad train up through the Gold Rust Pass of Yukon. And I have to tell you that if you ever have a chance to do that, you will enjoy it. But they encouraged us to get on the platforms and look at the, the scenery along the way. And so I got a, I struck up a conversation with a very friendly conductor and we were chatting about the scenery and I said, hey, you, would you mind if I took a picture of you, a snapshot of you? And he looked at me and he said, Sonny, you're on vacation, you can do anything you want. <laughs> and so I took a snapshot. I happen to know the artist that painted this picture, um, but it's, um, a portrayal of the, uh, of the conductor looking out at uh, the Gold Rush Pass. So the next territory over is the Northwest Territories. And this is a picture of, uh, sort of an aerial picture of Glacier Lake in the Northwest Territories uh, in the Nahani National Park Reserve. And uh, kind of a gorgeous looking panorama, uh, but you see this kind of rugged terrain uh, all through the Northwest Territories. If you're lucky, you'll see the Aurora Borealis, or the Northern Lights. This happens to be uh, in the lower part of the Northwest Territories by Fort Simpson. Uh, note this, the float plains here that uh, are uh, on the lake. So charged particles from the sun strike atoms 
in the Earth's atmosphere, causing electrons in the atoms to move to a higher energy state. When they drop back down to their lower energy state, they release a photon or light creating northern lights. That's as technical as I'm going to get tonight. Uh, uh, I'm trying to explain sort of what happens, uh, the, the, the uh, if you will, energy from the sun excites the electrons in the upper atmosphere, and then when they cool down at night, especially in the northern climates, they release uh, light, and you see these northern lights. By the way, this does not happen in just Canada. It happens in some of the northern parts of the United States as well. Some of you may have had an opportunity to see them. They're quite, quite impressive. If you wander a little bit further north, uh, you'll encounter uh, the ragged range of the Northwest ter Territories. Uh, this is a series of sheer granite cliffs. Uh, the French Canadians like to call them uh, uh, La Range de Unclimbables. <laughs> and of course that provokes some climbers and they wound up climbing these, these ranges so they're no longer unclimbables, but they certainly are a rugged part of uh, the Northwest Territories. Least you think that the folks in Northwest Territories don't have a sense of humor. Here is a vanity blade that says, too cold. Uh, and note that the silhouette for the license plate in Northwest Territories is a polar bear. So now we're going to move over uh, to the third territories in Canada. Not pronounced Nunavut, but Nunavut. Uh, and this is a um, sort of depicted, it's a little hard to make it out in this very light yellow, uh, an area of many islands, uh, which used to be part of the Northwest Territories. But in 1999, uh, the, uh, the native North American Indians uh, were granted this as a separate territory. <laughs> And about 85% of the residents are actually um, Native North American Indians. Um, and I want to tell you that the uh, population of the entire territories is about 33,000. There's not a whole lot of people up there uh, in the Northwest Territories. Uh, by perspective, Athens is 120,000, so one fourth of our population is all over this territory right here. The Nunavut territories do go past the Arctic Circle, and you'll find, guess what, polar bears in uh, the, the territories, and it is also cold. Indigenous residents of the Nunavut territories are called Inuit, previously called Eskimos. That's now considered to be a somewhat of a derogatory term. <clears throat> literally translated means uh, eaters of raw meat and so um, they've um, changed the, uh, the, the term to uh, Inuit. Um, the temperature, uh, the record temperature uh, is minus 63 degrees Fahrenheit which explains the mittens in the, in the picture here. Um, how cold is 63 degrees minus 63 degrees Fahrenheit? Well, by perspective, gasoline freezes between minus 40 and minus 70 degrees Fahrenheit, depending on how much ethanol it has, which tells you that a dog sled is more reliable than a snowmobile up in this area. Very cold. So here are some examples of some Inuit art. Uh, the upper left is a, a puffin, and then below that is a graphic symbol of a orca. Uh, and of course, the, the very traditional uh, photo bowl, uh, which is carved uh, of revered symbols, uh, the hawk, if you will, uh, at the top. Uh, there's a fisherman in that totem pole. So the trivial question for the night is, what's the tallest totem pole? Answer, 180 feet carved from a single tree. So these things can be pretty impressive in their own right. So this is a picture of my wife taming the wild ones in Canada. Uh, she is feeding a grizzly bear barehanded. Of course, she's standing next to a statue. That's not really a real grizzly bear. <laughs> 
uh, we, we took an excursion to go to a dog sled camp uh, where they groomed dogs for the Iditarod uh, dog sled race. And uh, they uh, made the mistake of handing my wife one of the little puppies. And it was all I could do to convince her not to take it on the airplane with her. <laughs> anyway. So this is the Ashuyuk Pass in Owetuk National Park in Baffin Island in the Nunavut Territories. That is about as much native North American as I can say in one night. Um, but it's a kind of an eerie looking uh, location. And if you look through this fog, this sort of sunny fog, you'll see this sort of rugged <coughs> terrain here uh, in this uh, pass and uh, gives you sort of a sense of how rugged the Northwest Territories, I'm sorry, the Newland, uh, New Newland Territories are. There's another interesting one in that same park called the Twin Peaks of Mount Asgard uh, in the Owetuk National Park. Um, and don't ask me exactly how these guys had their, their peaks shaved off, um, except that they're known for this sort of flat, um, very uh, unique look. Some fun facts about Canada. Canada's population is 35 million. That's about a tenth of America's. By perspective of uh, California has 39 million, so California has more uh, residents than the entirety of uh, the country of Canada. About 90% of Canadians live within 125 miles of the Canadian U.S. border. I, we lived in Windsor, Ontario, what I like to call the Miami <laughs> of Canada. It's in the, the southern part of uh, Ontario. Uh, but many of the inhabitants, Toronto, Vancouver, live within uh, the U.S. borders. Canada has two languages, if you will, or their languages are English and French, uh, with a very high literacy rate of 99%. We were um, talking to a high school counselor, both my daughters uh, graduated from a high school in Windsor, Ontario, and um, I am fully capable of putting my foot in my mouth, and I was talking to the counselor, and so I sort of casually said, so what other foreign languages do you have besides French? Mm -hmm. She yeah. looked at me and said, excuse me, Mr. Willis, but French is our language. Mm -hmm. uh, I think she almost said it in French, excusez-moi, Mr. Willis, but... Uh, Anyway, uh, you'll find a fair amount of French spoken in, in Canada. Um, Canada gained its independence from Britain in 1867. And today, Queen Elizabeth II is also the Queen of Canada. Well, the Prime Minister of Canada is elected by the people. Uh, as I mentioned, that's Justin Trudeau. When we were in Windsor, uh, one uh, year, our next door neighbors, a very friendly couple, invited us uh, to a New Year's brunch. So on New Year's Day, uh, we're enjoying this brunch, and they break out champagne and toast the queen. First time I've ever toasted the queen in my life, but apparently a tradition in Canada. So we're going to go down to the provinces, and this is the far western province uh, in British Columbia. This happens to be the southwest corner called the Inside Passage, uh, a very scenic panorama uh, of that particular province, British Columbia. And you might ask, what is the Inside Passage, or sometimes called the Inner Passage? And it is a tract of land that goes all the way down here from Vancouver, works its way up. And there's a series of <coughs> islands, if you will, along the shoreline that makes its way up to Skagway up here. And this, uh, this inside passage is uh, very rugged and very scenic at the same time. Vancouver is the provincial capital of uh, British Columbia and a, uh, a very sought out after tourist attraction. If you ever have an opportunity to drive from Seattle up north to Vancouver, I'd encourage you to do it. It's a beautiful city, very cosmopolitan, um, and uh, scenic in the sense that it's right on the shoreline, on the uh, shoreline of the Pacific Ocean. Vancouver, by the way, has a population of about 2 million people in its surrounds. 
Some of you kick around a little bit in uh, British Columbia. <laughs> on the southern edge, you'll find the Juan Perez Sound. Uh, and you can see at, at certain times of year, uh, orcas stretching or flipping out of the water. Uh, the native uh, North American Indians like to call the orca the lord of the ocean. Sort of on the flip side is uh, a little bit north uh, of British Columbia uh, is uh, an archipelago, uh, archipelago uh, rainforest uh, pronounced the uh, Haida Gui. Haida Gui. Haida Gui. Please feel free to correct me because I'm only as good as the Google or the YouTube sound translator. Haida Gui. Uh, but a kind of an interesting uh, rainforest group of islands that you find a uh, almost tropical climate and um, uh, kind of contradicts the cold Canada that many people think about. You hear that? That's a sound effect. <laughs> uh, this is Lake Louise in the Banff National Park. With, uh, within the province of Alberta, which is a, a province right next door to British Columbia, uh, and a popular tourist destination, in part because there's a famous motel called the, the Fairmont Chateau along the shoreline of Lake Louise, and this is about 100 years old, popular uh, destination for many celebrities and tourists uh, alike, a beautiful location. Going a little bit toward the Canadian Rockies, you'll run into Moraine Lake in the Valley of the Ten Peaks. And if you look here, you can see the Canadian Rockies with the Ten Peaks here. My wife, when she was um, about uh, eight or nine years old, family lived in the middle of Canada in uh, Regina, or outside of Regina in Weyburn. And they took a vacation, and uh, he only told me that she dumped her toe in this lake and almost went into cardiac arrest. It was so cold. Um, it's a clear, beautiful lake, but very cold. You'll find glaciers in Alberta. This is the Athabasca Glacier in the Columbia Ice Field. Um, and if you ask the question, how fast does a glacier move? It's about a yard a day. And you can take an excursion and walk across the glacier if you so choose. But you need a guide because there are crevasses in the glacier which are covered by soft ice. And if you step into one of those, you may take a plunge of about 300 feet down to a cold stream below. Not recommended. It might ruin your whole day. This is uh, Waka, Saskatchewan. And where, Mark, in the devil is Wakas? Well, it's 300 miles north of Moose Jaw. <laughs> Moose Jaw is right next to Succotash. I'm just teasing. Uh, it is uh, sort of in the, the center uh, of uh, Saskatchewan, uh, an interesting province, but sometimes referred to as a breadbasket. This is a wheat field in Saskatchewan. At least you think that Saskatchewan is just a uh, flat land. It, it has a uh, an area called the Grasslands National Park. And surprisingly, this uh, province boasts 100,000 lakes. So if you go far enough into the province, you'll find lakes. And you'll also find another interesting thing. It is the Great Sand Hills Ecological Reserve. This is about a 30-acre uh, tract of land in Scepter, Saskatchewan. Uh, some think it's uh, the remnants of an old ocean bottom. Another interesting place in Saskatchewan is Castle Butte in the Big Muddy Valley, for obvious reasons. This looks a little bit like Arizona or New Mexico here. A um, little interesting story, there is a famous outlet law called uh, The Sundance Kid. Uh, you may have seen the movie, uh, your baby boomer, uh, Butch Cassie and the Sundance Kid. Uh, when the Sundance Kid was fleeing the law, in America, they went up to Canada and are said to have resided in the Big Muddy Valley. So, don't know that there's a plaque here with the Sundance Kid's name on it or not, but anyway. So, uh, adjacent to um, 
Saskatchewan is the province of Manitoba. And Manitoba is a, um, a native of a uh, North American word which stands for the Strait of Manitoba, which is a lake in the southern center of, uh, of this province. It's considered to be Canada's most sunny province. Question, what is the most sunny location in North America? Answer, Yuma, Arizona. About 90% of its days are sunny. Um, this, conversely, is Hudson Bay near Churchill, Manitoba. Hudson Bay just thawed out last month in June. They just yeah, started to melt their ice. So it is a cold part of the world, but uh, uh, interesting. Uh, the body of water for the Hudson Bay is huge. Uh, and is actually bracketed by a territory and three provinces. Uh, and there were some trappers about 400 years ago that uh, trapped beaver and other uh, furs. They started a company called the Hudson Bay Trapping Company or Trading Company, which is now a department store in Canada. You, you can find Hudson Bay in many parts of Canada. So Churchill, Manitoba has also got another interesting reputation. They are the polar bear capital of the world. A couple of cubs there. Here is an up close and personal uh, picture of a polar bear. Guys, yeah, kind of foreboding uh, when they stand on their hind legs. They can be up to 10 feet uh, tall. It's said that the polar bear is the largest bear, but I think the grizzly might take exception to that. I think the grizzly can get about 12 feet high. So my wife and I, we were listening to a discussion with a forest ranger, and he was explaining what you do if you're on a hike and you encounter a bear. And what he said was, you stand up, you hold your hands up high, and you shout, go bear. I gotta tell you, that's the last thing I would do if I encountered a 12 foot tall bear. Um, it's interesting, the uh, polar bear uh, fur is actually hollow, and it acts as a sort of a sort of a form of buoyancy, so they can swim in the water and, and float very easily. And you can see that, uh, that, that little guy there is swimming in the, what I believe is a zoo in Canada. So Mark, where the heck is Churchill, Manitoba? Now yeah, it is tucked right up here in the northern part of Manitoba. I believe one of the uh, uh, fine young ladies said that she had spent some time in Winnipeg, which is on the southern edge of Manitoba. And this is Hudson Bay here, which is a sort of a sprawling, huge bay where the snowmobile was uh, gliding across the ice. So, it's all about attitude. On a positive note, I haven't seen any mosquitoes in weeks. There's a camper that's buried in a cloud of snow. Got to have a sense of humor when you're in Canada. This is uh, the uh, Horseshoe Falls of Niagara Falls in Ontario. And uh, many folks will say, if you want to get a good view of the Niagara Falls, go to the Canadian side, and it's, it's in fact true. It's, you see some interesting things on the U.S. side, but uh, on the Canadian side is a majestic. And this is a photograph of uh, a, a group of tourists admiring the falls. Just a couple of interesting things about the Niagara Falls. It uh, is used to generate power, and so the falling water goes through some uh, hydro turbines and generates something like 2 million kilowatts uh, per hour. Mark. How much is 2 million kilowatts? Well, that could light about 33 million 60 watt bulbs or 130 million CFL bulbs, halogen bulbs. Uh, it's a bunch. Uh, in fact, when you get a power bill in Canada, it's often referred to as a hydro bill, not a electric bill. So. This is a skyline of Toronto. Toronto is the largest city in Canada. There are about six million people in the uh, fair city of Toronto, in the metropolitan area. Uh, and it is across the lake from Lake Ontario, <coughs> and uh, a nice city to go to. Uh, Toronto has an interesting uh, sort of characteristic. If you go into the subways, you'll not see any graffiti. It's not like New York. <laughs> uh, 
uh, and they are amazingly clean in their subway systems. It's almost uh, impressive in its own right. Uh, Toronto also has another interesting thing. They have 1,600 parks in their city. So it's a very green city. They're known for their zoo. It's the largest in Canada and home to over 16,000 animals. This is a Bengal tiger that you're looking at. He's upside down. That's what he looks like when he's right side up. <clears throat> this is an interesting uh, attraction in uh, Ontario. It's called the Thousand Island Bridge near Lansdowne, Ontario. And it's equal distance from the capital of Canada, the, the national capital of Ottawa, as well as Syracuse, New York. And just a little bit of background about this bridge, which is quite picturesque. It straddles the St. Lawrence Freeway, I'm sorry, Seaway, uh, and there, it's known for its thousand islands, uh, dotted over here, kind of a vacation desk. But uh, almost 80 years ago when they built this bridge, uh, people said, ah, why, why are you building that bridge? It's, have you heard this before, a bridge to nowhere? Mm -hmm. uh, and there was a lot of uh, skeptics that were saying, you're building a bridge that no one's going to want to go across. Well, the line that is today, there are about two million people that are two million uh, passenger vehicles that go across this bridge every year. By the way, this bridge, if you have an occasion to jump on it from Syracuse, um, only accepts cash for the toll. And so have fifteen dollars of cash ready to pay for the toll. Why do they only accept cash, Mark? Well, it turns out that the Canadians and the New Yorks, and New York actually administers this, the tolls on this bridge, can't seem to get along with credit card exchanges. So there's constant quibbling about what is the fair exchange right and so forth. But we'll solve this problem with charge cash, be forewarned. Ottawa is uh, the national capital and also in uh, the fair province of Ontario. It's the seat of the federal government. And uh, it's a beautiful city to go to. I welcome you to go there. Uh, besides having uh, many beautiful museums, natural history museums, art museums, you can tour the, the federal uh, parliament, um, but they have uh, waterways and so forth. Interesting factoid, 25% of uh, residents in Ottawa are not Canadians. They're um, from other parts of the world. So we're going on the opposite direction is the very southern tip of the province of Ontario called Point Pelee. It's a national park and boasts the country's southernmost part of the land. And it's looking over Lake Erie. On a clear day, you can see the city of Cleveland across the lake uh, from Point Pelee. There's also a bird sanctuary. And um, I got too, too deep into the weeds here, and I was reading about the bird sanctuary, Jack Miner's bird sanctuary. And it turns out it's the sanctuary for Canadian geese. And too deep in the weed means I started to learn a little bit about Canadian geese and find out that they actually form their own gangs. And uh, one of the ways that they communicate with one another, that is their gang, is not through hip hop, but by honking. So unique honks for different gang members. So if you're starting to be honked at by a Canadian geese, you might want to get out of the way. They might, they may mug you, I don't know. So this is Canadian, I'm sorry, the provincial capital of Quebec. We're going to talk a little bit about the province of Quebec called Quebec City, interestingly enough. It's one of the oldest European settlements in North America. And Quebec City has a kind of an interesting feature. They have a wall that surrounds part of their city called a citadel, and they've got an interesting uh, attraction to see in its own right. Got a kind of a distinctive European uh, flavor to it. You notice the houses are vividly colored and, colored and also quite close to one another. Sort of on the opposite side is the Les Isles de, de la Maglin, or the Maglin Islands. Uh, and this is the source of, and I gotta get this pitch in here, rock salt uh, for Canada. And there is actually a mine uh, in, this, in this strip of land here, and they uh, go down about a thousand feet and dig out rock salt, bring it to the surface. 
and loaded onto ocean-going vessels and distributed through parts of the eastern part of, the, of Canada. This is downtown Montreal. It's seen from a lookout of Mount Royal. And now you know where Montreal gets its name. Um, but it's a beautiful city. Uh, this is the second largest city in Canada, about four million in the metropolitan area. Um, but there are lots of interesting things to see, uh, one of which is, uh, I think it's the Notre Dame Cathedral in Montreal, and uh, a, a beautiful church to just visit. Um, but if I were to see, if you want to have a cheap thrill, go to a French Canadian restaurant that specializes in Italian food and order in French Italian food. You will find that your cerebral cortex is thoroughly scrambled by the time you're done. <laughs> John Lennon uh, was refused entry into the United States, so some of you boomers can identify with this. He was protesting the Vietnam War. And so he conducted what he called a bed in at the Queen Elizabeth Hotel in Montreal, where he wrote Give Peace a Chance in 1969, just a small chapter in history there. So this is the village of Le Bouillemont, in uh, translated to landslides. Uh, a number of years ago, they had a ship, a Teutonic plate shipped in this village and it caused a number of landslides. It's near Charlois, Quebec. Little known um, fact is that Quebec exports about 85% of the world's maple syrup. We think about Vermont and other places as being the sole supplier of maple syrup. It turns out that Quebec is, is a big supplier with their maple tree population, syrup producing trees. So you can buy maple candy, maple syrup, maple this, maple that. You can even buy maple marinade. I'm not exactly sure what to do with maple marinade, but you can buy it. And there's a wee bit of Ireland in the next province of New Brunswick. This is a thriving potato crop in Drummond, New Brunswick. And it turns out that uh, this, this part of, uh, of uh, Canada, uh, besides the small island of Prince Edward Island, produces quite a bit of potato crop for Canada. Here is the Flower Pot Islands at high tide in Hope. Cape, New Brunswick. Uh, the tide can go about 40 feet up uh, in this location. <coughs> it's kind of interesting to see the trees. Trees can grow anywhere, but they're growing on top of this rock here. Don't ask me why, but there you are. Mm -hmm. However, if you want to see the tallest tides in the world, go to the Bay of Fundy in New Brunswick, where the tides can get over five stories high, or 53 feet high, I think it's the highest tide recorded. And so some of you may know that the tides are caused by the moon. As the moon gets closer to the earth, it causes the seas to bulge and swells the water and creates those tides. And uh, we were kicking around on a vacation one summer and we went to the Bay of Fundy and we saw a phenomenon called the reversing falls where the water goes down from left to right one moment and then the high tide comes and it goes from right to left. An interesting phenomenon we've never seen that before. So if you're ever in Maine, it turns out that New Brunswick is a fairly easy ride, uh, drive to uh, a destination a lot of people go to, which is Bangor, Maine. So if you go to the capital of New Brunswick, St. John, it's about a four or five hour drive, a pleasant drive, and you can uh, authentically say you've been to New Brunswick, Canada. <laughs> Here is uh, part of the uh, Nova Scotia, and here is Prince Edward Island. Yeah. The Confederation Bridge links New Brunswick to Prince Edward Island, or PEI, and covers eight miles. And I read that it's the longest bridge in the world, and the truth is, no, the Chinese built a bridge that's 100 miles long. And so now they claim it is the longest bridge over ice water <laughs> in the world. Yeah. Uh, some of you may know about uh, the author uh, uh, Lucy 
Lucy Maud Montgomery, who wrote uh, Anne of Green Gables and kind of put uh, Prince Edward Island on the map when it became made as a movie series. And some of you may have seen the actress that portrayed uh, Anne of Green Gables in the series. And I want to say it was uh, 10 or so years ago, but a very popular movie series. One, you know, full of uh, memorable quotes, but one of the ones that I like is, true friends are always together in spirit. She actually wrote that novel in 1908, and so it took a number of years to become made a, a movie series, but <clears throat> I encourage you to, to check that out sometime. On uh, Travers, uh, Kate Travers in PEI, you can find canola fields, one of the crops that they, they grow. Uh, another part of the world also goes canola, maybe you know about it, it's Western Australia. So if you go halfway around the world, you'll find a similar kind of crop with a similar kind of a topography. We're going to move next door to the province of Nova Scotia, and on the northern part, you'll find the Cabot Trail in what is called Cape Britain Highlands. And this is kind of a rugged highway that goes along their shoreline. And, uh, I don't know, I guess it's got guardrails here, but it's kind of a cute drill as we go uh, along here. Um, the Nova Scotians have a cute sense of humor, but they like to say that to date there have been zero lion attacks in Nova Scotia. Um, anyway, it's a, a pretty part of the world. This is Fort George on Citadel Hill in Halifax, Nova Scotia. Um, and if you look closely, you'll see not only a citadel around this fort, but also a moat. Uh, made the, the fort uh, pretty impenetrable for a long time. Of course, they decided to put a city up around the, the outside of it. Um, it's interesting, uh, Halifax likes to, I'm not sure they boast it, but uh, they claim that they have more pups per capita than any place in Canada could be closely correlated to the fact that they have six universities in Nova Scotia, or Halifax, rather. Uh, but anyway, that's a breaking point, I guess. This is a lighthouse in Cape Fortu in Yarmouth, uh, Nova Scotia. And some folks have heard about Cadians who have uh, migrated to the Louisiana bayous. And, and there's different stories about how come the Cadians, which uh, are French in origin, wound up in, uh, in L.A. And it turns out that in the skirmishes between the French and the English, uh, the French Canadians did not want to swear loyalty to the crown. So they were cordially required to leave the uh, island and uh, some of them found their way down to the uh, uh, Louisiana bayous. And so you can, um, you can encounter the uh, Acadians. And I have to tell you that um, the accent of the Acadians are, is unique. Um, I had a facility when I worked with Morton Salt uh, in Louisiana, uh, and uh, there was a pipe fitter who had an Acadian accent, and I was always about 15 seconds behind the conversation. Guaranteed, Mark. Uh, okay. <coughs> This absolutely has nothing to do with Canada. It's an opportunity for me to show off my grandchildren. Uh, Grace, Marlena, Jack, Maddox, Ellen, and the youngest one, Crimson. Duty done as grandparents. This is Balancing Rock on Long Island, Nova Scotia. Do not ask me how they got that rock to balance like that, but it's a, a famous tourist attraction. Some of you may have heard the term blue nosers, a reference to people from Nova Scotia. It comes from a racing yacht called the Blue Nose. It was painted blue and uh, was undefeated for 17 years. So they got that, that name, blue nosers, if you will. This is Signal Hill. We're looking at St. John's and Newfoundland in the Labrador uh, province. So we're going to catch uh, the, the most eastern province of Canada, Newfoundland and uh, or Newfoundland uh, and the Labrador province. Um, they're kind of proud of being unique, and so their time zone is not an hour ahead of the Atlantic time. It's 30 minutes 
<laughs> uh, which makes life a little confusing. Uh, this is a uh, perspective uh, beside uh, the uh, harbor of uh, Signal Hill, uh, and part of the reason for the name has to do with the fact that there was a flag post that was used to send naval signals, or rather signals to naval vessels from the land and sort of orchestrate the goings on during conflicts with Navy and armaments. Mm -hmm. Houses along Jelly Bean Row in St. Jones. Um, it turns out that uh, Newfoundland is the youngest province, um, was even well born as a province in 1949. Um, unique kind of coloring of the houses there, but <coughs> European in flavor. So on the other side of uh, Newfoundland is uh, a beautiful part of the, the world called Westbrook Pond in Gross Morne National Park. This is along the Gulf of St. Lawrence. Here's another interesting uh, segment of Newfoundland. It's the Cape Bonavista Lighthouse. Um, if you will, that area discovered by John Cabot, an explorer, when he got on the island, he looked up over the sea and said, ah, Buena Vista, beautiful view. Um, they built a lighthouse of, over a couple of years. There it is right there, tucked up there. Um, this is a map, if you will, to sort of show you where that lighthouse is. It's right here, kind of guarding the, uh, the shoreline there. So, Mark, where the heck is Newfoundland and Labrador? Well, turns out that this is Newfoundland, and here is Labrador. And Labrador is sort of sliced out of that Quebec province there, and uh, it is the most eastern province, if you will, of, uh, of Canada. At least you think it does not get cold up there. You can discover massive icebergs near St. Anthony, Labrador. I thought this next slide was kind of cute. To survive the Canadian winter, one needs a body of grass, eyes of glass, and blood made from brandy. <laughs> this is the Atlantic Puffin near Whitless Bay in the Newfoundland. Uh, the bay is named after Captain Whittle, an explorer. Uh, when Captain Whittle passed away, it became Whittleless Bay and then shortened to Whitless Bay. Not sure I'd want to be named after a Whitless Bay, but that's this uh, Atlantic Puffin's kind of an interesting character in and of itself, sometimes called the clown of the ocean uh, for the vivid uh, web feet and also the very colorful beak here. And yeah, Mark, you really can't talk about Canada without talking a little bit about hockey. Uh, so here is a Canadian icon, Wayne Gretzky, who has um, gone on record as scoring the most goals in the National Hockey League, uh, 894. Uh, for you hockey fans, Gordy Howe uh, scored uh, 794, about 100 goals less. Anyway, Mr. Gretzky was known for his quotes. Here's a couple of my favorite here. When you win, say nothing. When you lose, say less. <laughs> you miss 100 of the shots you don't take. I'm not sure if that is a bar quotation or, <laughs> um, but uh, a lot of people will re-quote re that. You miss 100% of the shots you don't take. So, do you all know this about Canada? Canada is the home of the longest street in the world. <laughs> Young Street in Ontario starts at Lake Ontario and runs to the Minnesota border almost 1,200 miles long. That, put that in your GPS and let it chew on that one. Canada has been twice invaded by the U.S., first in 1775 and again in 1812. It's in part because the Canadians stayed loyal to the crown while the Americans sort of rebelled against it. 
you know, find that sort of battering going back and forth. Um, by the way, both of those invasions were not successful, but the Americans were disturbed by the sanctuaries held in Canada uh, by British and French, and so they invaded. Oops, I didn't mean to do that. I didn't mean to be that quick. Uh, the capital of Canada, Ottawa, is the second coldest capital in the world. This is the national capital of Ulan Bator in Mongolia is the first. I have no idea where Ulan Bator is, but it must be mighty cold. Dog food is tax deductible in Canada, <laughs> something that UGA students would like. The baseball glove was invented in Canada in 1883. I never would have guessed. There are more donut shops in Canada per capita than any other country. And I'm here to tell you that Tim Hortons donuts are some good donuts. Um, Canada Canadians like both gravy and vinegar on their french fries. You should try it. It's actually pretty good. Um, there are 11 subspecies of Canadian geese. All are capable of running their golf game. Montreal is the world's second largest French-speaking city after Paris. Just to tell you a, a little brief story about uh, French-speaking. So I suffered through three years of French in high school. Fast forward and Morton Salt buys a French salt company and my boss comes up to me and he says, Willis, you know how to speak French? We. Oui. So I took a plane and flew over to um, France and visited a couple of French salt, uh, Salin de Midi was the salt company. And um, after about a week of slaughtering and massacring their language, they were happy to see me leave. <laughs> but uh, they do know how to make salt in France. Uh, here's an interesting little statistic. 55% of Canadians are quite happy and 32% are very happy. I have no idea how they did that survey. But I thought it was kind of a cute survey. And that is the end of the